Hello, I'm Aaron Marino from Alpha M Image Consulting, and I've got a question for you. Is it possible to look stylish and at the same time cool while wearing a winter hat? Hey, my name's Paul, and I can't figure out why I get zero ass. All right, well, this is an extreme case of unstylish and uncool, but I see guys walking around in hats that aren't much better. And now let's pause for a style public service announcement. Gentlemen, stylish men do not, under any circumstances, wear winter hats with puffy balls on the top of them. It is acceptable, however, for a stylish man to wear a winter hat with a beard. And it is acceptable for the stylish macho man to wear a skull cap with humping moose. Now my initial answer to my own question is no. Wearing a winter hat is not doing anything for your image or your hair. But growing up on the frozen tundras of Valley Forge, Pennsylvania with pointy little ears like these has led me to some conclusions. That conclusion, once in a while, warmth and comfort trumps style. So today, I thought that we'd go over some winter hat options to find a style that's not only warm, but reasonably non-offensive. Let's start by talking about different material options that you have when it comes to winter hats. The first is acrylic. Acrylic is a man-made material, and it, generally speaking, is going to be pretty warm, and it is also going to be lightweight. There are a lot of hats that are made out of acrylic. You just might not know it. It might feel really soft and lush, but it's actually a synthetic and it is acrylic. Another option is fleece. Fleece has become incredibly popular in the past, I'd say, 15 years. This is actually made out of polyester, so this also is a synthetic. It's going to be very lightweight and incredibly warm, but not as warm as wool. In the old days, winter hats were only made of wool. You didn't have all the synthetic materials. Uh, but it takes a lot of sheep to make a lot of wool hats. The other downside to wool is that it can be incredibly itchy. Me, I've got a mild allergy to wool because it itches like crazy and I break out in hives and it's not a pretty scene. But wool is incredibly helpful if your hat gets wet because wool actually retains heat and is going to keep you warm even if it is soaking wet. And you can't talk about winter hats without talking about fur winter hats. Head coverings made of fur have been around a lot longer than wool stocking caps. Uh, that's basically all they had. They had bunnies, they had sheep, they had things that they didn't necessarily... Kill it! Wear it! The majority of hats are one size fits all, but what I typically find is that my head is not apparently what fits all means. But you can find hats that come in small, medium, large, and extra large. Um, some of the higher end companies actually make hats in sizes, and so obviously that's going to fit me a little bit better. So there are options if you do have a real tiny noggin or a real super large cabeza. You have to determine how you like your winter hat to fit. Me personally, I don't like a hat to have a lot of extra room in the crown of the hat. I like it to fit nice and snug. I also don't like winter hats that are a little bit more on the big and bulky side. Reason being is that I feel like I look like a little kid. It's a little bit less aesthetically pleasing if you ask me. So now let's go over some of the most common types of winter hat options. And if I call a specific type of hat something and you call it something else, just relax. Before you go hitting the dislike button and posting comments like, WRONG! It's called a beanie! Take a deep breath. Center yourself. Again. Okay, you relaxed? Here's the deal. Depending on where you live, people call different hats different things, okay? We got it? Let's continue. Okay, first up is the beanie. The beanie is a head-hugging, brimless cap. It comes with and without a visor, but the visor that typically accompanies the beanie is typically about an inch wide. The beanie is a little bit larger than its cousin, the skull cap. Another common hat is the skull cap. The skull cap is a round, brimless hat fitting the crown of the head. Another option is the bomber hat. Now these hats are typically going to have a synthetic nylon top 
It's good for repelling water, sleet, and snow. It's also going to have, if you want to, you can typically wear the bomber like this and be like, hey, what's up? And then, oh my gosh, it's getting cold, I'm freezing. So, boom! Now I'm not freezing. My ears are covered, I'm warm, and I am ready to brave the Arctic temperatures. These are good if you're doing something very, that requires you to be warm and you are in a sub-Arctic zone, very cold. These are great. These look, you decide. Are, <laughs> if I see somebody, I'm like, oh man, there's somebody. She, Ooh, smoking. I'm going to go up and say, hey, am I going to be... Really? No. <laughs> there are other options. Another winter hat option that is wildly popular with the kids these days, the ski hat. The ski hat is interesting. It's curious to me. You've got the warmth of the regular knit hat, but then you've got a tassel up top, typically. You've also got ear flaps and long corn row like braids that you can stroke or tie so that when you're slaloming down the hill your hat stays on. Functional. And last but certainly not least the knit cap or the toque or the watch cap or there I'm sure you got another name for it. The knit cap happens to be my personal favorite and here are some reasons why I think the knit cap rocks. The first reason is color. Knit hats are generally going to come in unlimited numbers of different colors. You're also not going to have a bunch of different patterns or mousse or whatever it is on the hat. It's going to come in a solid. Typically you're going to find black, brown, slate gray, medium gray. They come in green. Yeah, any color you can think of, they make a knit hat. Reason number two is the price. Knit hats are going to be incredibly reasonable. In many cases, downright cheap. You see that? Two dollars. This hat, this hat, these hats, two dollars. I got them at Walmart. So you can go and get a bunch of different colors. I actually bought like three black hats because I go out running and they match with pretty much everything. Reason number three, they are timeless. Knit hats are pretty much the working man's hat. You go to the docks, dock workers are wearing knit hats. You go to the factories and factory workers are wearing knit hats. Farmers, knit hats. Everybody throughout history, the salt of the earth, we're wearing knit hats. You can also wear them in different fun and creative ways. You can wear it normally where your earlobes are showing or if it gets colder you can just pull that down a little bit more and your earlobes are nice and warm and toasty now. Or you can pull one side down a little bit more than the other. It's sort of an asymmetrical, hey I just tossed my hat on and I didn't really plan it to look this sort of asymmetrical but it does and hey. Or you can do what all the hipsters are doing these days and pull it back throw on your hipster glasses and just like that that's all they're doing there's nothing special special all the celebrities are wearing their hats this way I don't really understand why I don't think it looks horrible I don't think it looks great you sort of look like a smurf and the last reason that the standard knit cap gets my style seal of approval is because you look a lot less like a penis wearing that hat as opposed to this hat. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess technically. But seriously, the standard knit cap, it is clean, it is simple, it is inexpensive, and it is classic. There is nothing that is going to go out of style with this next year, five years from now. These things are going to keep you warm, but at the same time, keep you looking fresh, baby! You think this hat makes me look tough? Damn! I didn't think so.